Hello and welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one I'll be showing you how to create a procedural animated rippling fluid material in Blender 4. Here are the specs of the system that I'll be using. It's Blender 4.2, Windows 11, NVIDIA graphics card, Cycles render engine and a custom startup file that I show how to create in a separate video. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. Okay, so most of this is my original custom startup file. I've just added a couple of extra objects to set the scene. So this is a circle mesh with a grid fill applied and then these modifiers also applied to it to make it a more three-dimensional object. I've also duplicated a couple of the spheres for some foreground and then I've added some three point lighting. So it's just basically three spotlights, one at the back for backfill and then two at the front. I've set them uh, equally distant apart, but you can obviously play around for better uh, results if you want to. And of course, we've got Suzanne in the middle there. So I'm going to select her, switch over to the shading tab, enable viewport render and then, or sorry, display render preview, assign a new material and call it rippling fluid. There we go, we're off to a flying start. Now, I'm going to delete the principled shader, keep the material output, and then get it to the top right corner. Then I'm going to press Shift A and search for a glass BSDF. Then I want a refraction BSDF. And also a layer weight node. So we'll start with these three. We're going to apply a mix shader to the glass and refraction BSDFs and plug those into the surface of the material output. We're then going to use the Fresnel output from the layer weight to adjust the factor or the mixing factor and we'll set that value to 0.175. Because I'm using the cycles render engine, I'm switching over to Beckman on both the glass and the refraction shader. For the glass, a 0 on roughness, 1.9 on index of refraction. On the refraction, a roughness of 0.5 and an index of refraction at 1.33. Okay, so there's a start for us. I'm now going to search for and apply a principled volume node. And I'll plug that into the volume output. I'm going to set the main color with a hex value of 78C9E1. So blue, basically. The absorption color I'm going to set as a darker blue. So the hex value there is 00B4D3. It's more of a sea greeny blue color. And then the density I will set at 0.75. I then want a displacement node and that's going to plug into the displacement output, surprisingly not. I'll set the mid level at 0.8 and the scale at 0.005 and we're using the object space. Okay, so that's the main components. Obviously we need to add some ripples as well. So I'll search for a noise texture. And also a texture coordinate. And I'll connect that up using the object output into the vector input. It's pretty standard for most materials. Then I'm going to get a mix color node. Connect up the color output from the noise texture into the A slot and then the object output from the texture coordinate to the B slot. And you can see there by isolating that mix node, see what's happening. 
So we're going to set this to 4D because then we can use this W value to animate those ripples. We're going to set the scale at uh, 0.5, the detail at 5, roughness at 0, and distortion at 2. We'll then add a mapping node after the mix node. And we're going to set the scale here at 0.5 on all XYZ. We'll then grab a wave texture and plug the vector output from the mapping node into the vector input for the wave texture. And you can already see those waves happening. We'll set that to bands, diagonal, sine, scale of 10, distortion of 10, detail of 15, detail scale of 1, and then leave the other two values at 0. We'll take this factor and plug it into the height on our displacement. And you can see there now the surface of that shader is now rippling, which is perfect. That's what we want. And we're going to take the color output here and plug it into the glass shader. We'll then grab a color ramp and drop it in between those two. And then we'll set this to B spline. And the first color will be 00C0E1. So you can see that's applying a color tint to the rippling. And then the second color stop is going to be 00A0BC. So this is adding color to what we've already got. So it's intensifying some of the ridges and uh, peaks and troughs or waves and undulations of the water. Now we're going to take the object output from the texture coordinate. Uh, hang on. What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, I was looking for this. I was looking for the refraction BSDF. I couldn't find it. That's what I wanted to plug the normal into. So yes, we'll take the object output from the texture coordinate and plug it into the normal of the refraction. And then we'll press shift, right click and drag across the connecting line from that texture coordinate and we will add a couple of extra points just so we can drag that connecting line around the other nodes rather than behind it otherwise it can get confusing then we're going to select everything from the texture coordinate to the wave texture and just move it into place I like to have my nodes organized do you let me know in the comments anyway you can see oh actually you can't see uh, basically by adjusting that W value we can animate those ripples. So I'm going to switch over to my animation tab. Just to show you the basic animation that I've got, which is the rotation. But to animate the W, we're going to start at frame zero and press I while we're hovering the cursor over that W value. Then we'll press Control Shift and the right, uh, right arrow to get to the end. Then the right arrow one more to go up to frame 241. I've got uh, 240 frames here. We'll set a higher value on that W and then press I on it to set that um, stop within the animation. I can then link this to the other node, uh, to the other shapes, as you saw me do there. Control Shift, uh, sorry, Shift and then select until you get the one that's got the things applied to it. Now we can apply the rippling fluid to the circle that's got the modifiers, but we want to go into the materials tab and add a second color stop. And then we take out all that rippling and just leave everything that's left. 
and then we have some still water and we can assign that uh, within the material editor by uh, changing the way in which the object uses that information. So basically we would go for, to the modifiers tab onto the solidify modifi modifier and then change rim from 0 to 1 and that will then pick up the next color or material down that stack that you saw. So the second one is um, it takes the first material as 0 and then the second material would be one stop along. Anyway, hope that made sense. So here are the render settings that I will be using to render this out. I got in a bit close so you can see better. Feel free to pause it if you need to take any notes or if you're following along, that's always cool. And then something else in the view layer tab, because we're using compositing, we must enable denoise and then enable denoising data in that view layer. And then we get these extra um, outputs from the render layers section and we connect them up as you see here. And then I've just added a brightness contrast node with those settings to help uh, give it some extra oomph. So with the lighting, I thought I'd show you the lighting settings that I've got. So this is the spotlight on the right. And you can see because I've got shadow caustics enabled, it's actually uh, using the color of that disk and projecting that through. So we will send that through to render and I'll leave it in real time. So we had about 10 seconds of getting through the uh, noise samples and then the rest of it, which took around up to 16 seconds, was the compositor. So it's basically helping us denoise it. Saves it taking minutes or even tens of minutes. Anyway, you can see here I've got the rippling fluid on those objects plus I've got the rotation as well which I think gives it a great effect. Anyway, I hope you like it and we'll give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe for future content and leave any questions and comments in the usual places. In the meantime, thanks for watching.